welcome to Herald Show. I know you're wondering why you're seeing my face starting this program. It is because two masquerades have decided to dance. And tonight, we are bringing you a bigger masquerade who is even bigger than the two masquerades you are seeing this night. We have tonight live from the Redeem Evangelical Mission Mission in Babuiga, the presiding bishop of the of Trem worldwide. Please help me welcome Bishop Mike Okonko. Good evening, sir. Thank you. It's my joy to be on the program. Thank you. And we also have the executive producer of Pearl Show himself, Mr. Matt, Mr. Peter Oina. Um, Bishop, I want to welcome, welcome you once again to Ireland. I know you you have been here three times now. Is it the third time or the fourth time? The third time. I know the very first time I was fortunate to be there. I actually did the coverage and it was on Perot Show. We got a lot of feedback, positive feedback. I still get people calling me, most especially when we were doing the promotional advert that you were coming all over the country. Ah, that's my bishop in Nigeria. How is he doing? Is he coming? I said, well, it's coming. So it's I don't know how many of, of them will be, will be here today. But well, I just want to say welcome back to Ireland. We are so blessed to have you here once again. And um, I pray that uh, whosoever is there this morning waiting for you, we go home with blessings flowing around them. Thank you. Here. Thank you. I appreciate your bringing me on. OK. Um, like my colleague has said, to start with, could you briefly tell us your experiences after having come to Ireland three times now? Well, I must say that um, from every indication, so much has been done since the last time I was here. And uh, I, I, must, I must give credit to the ministers that are here. There is no doubt Ireland is a virgin ground as far as the gospel is concerned. For some time now, it's been a sleeping nation in terms of the gospel. But thank God for the ministers of the gospel that God brought in here who have started to break the grounds. And uh, from the last time I came and what I'm seeing now, you can see that so much has been achieved. I wouldn't say we are we are where we would want to be. But obviously we are not where we used to be. So, so much has been done as far as the gospel is concerned. And I give that credit to the ministers in the land. Talking of um, the propagation of the gospel in Ireland, you say it's a virgin land. You've had um, other big ministers coming here and another big minister here. What is the concerted effort ministers are making to make sure that Christianity here, our Christians here, do not go astray? Well, the first thing is to break the spiritual atmosphere. You see, when a when there had been a, for a long time a stronghold holding a region, the visit of uh, strong ministers, one of the key things it enables and we are able to achieve is to break the spiritual atmosphere and make the ground, the ground easier for the ground ministers, those who are on ground, to be able to penetrate. Because, you know, we are involved in a spiritual uh, assignment and there are forces who have either to, for a period, for a long time, held the region in bondage. And so it is it's a visit of apostolic ministries that will enable this uh, stronghold to be broken. And then the pastors that are on ground can now have it easier than, than it used to be. So I would say that the visit of those ministers have really been very instrumental to the progress that we've seen since the last time I came. Um, why I ask that question is because when big ministers come, we see the upsurge of uh, people coming to that program. When those ministers now leave, you now see them withdrawing back. I mean, maybe you need to still put, instill that power into those ministers for them to still get the upsurge of that, that is the whole essence. The yes. whole essence is for us to impact, impact the lives of the pastors that are on ground, to know that 
if we can do it, they can do it. And uh, that's why we take time within the period of visitation to do what we call the school of ministry or leadership training to, for them to understand the, the dynamics of ministry, which if they put to work, it, they will be able to achieve the same result. Um, Pastor, uh, Bishop, talking about um, school of ministry or the leadership training, there's something that bothers me and I think about it every day. It's a trend now to see pastors beginning with, other, uh, with a particular church and after six months or one year, we hear that God has called him to open his own church. It's happening everywhere. And then there's crisis, the members are you know, separating, dividing, going. What do you think is responsible for that? Even when these pastors go through this leadership training and ministry to know that uh, continuity and obedience is very important in how you impact. Well, let me your... say, first of all, that um, it is not uh, a rule that a minister will stay for life in the ministry. And while I, w I want to underscore that God could, could genuinely call somebody out to do something new. Now, having said that, there, there is no doubt that there are many, many who are out there who claim that God had told them to go out and start a work, which have no business doing that. They only end up creating confusion and misunderstanding and sources of discord among brethren. It shouldn't be, because I always say to people, God cannot be calling you to a new work by destroying the one that is here, if we are all involved in the same kingdom. So oftentimes, most of this God said is not God saying. And, uh, and uh, like you know, just like in every other profession, we will always have charlatans, people who will not do the right thing. They are not ready to, to follow directives and instructions that are given. Because there are biblical way of living a work. If it is God, it, it will be decent. It will be peaceful. It will be a blessing. The individual will leave from the front door and can always come back to the house. Knowing fully well, this is the house that launched me out. As a matter of fact, that mother church should launch the person out and be there when the new church work is starting. That's how it should be. But oftentimes, I think what causes it is a quest for power, quest to, for money, and all that. That's, that's one of the reasons why those things happen. And the truth is that in the final analysis, somewhere along the line, it catches up with them. Because whatsoever you sow, you will reap. So there is no, it doesn't fail. I've seen it repeatedly over the years. When people do things like that, initially, you will think that, oh, this guy is making it. And people could rush there. And then suddenly, after a period of time, the trouble begins because you have laid the wrong foundation. So it's not a good thing to do at all. Anyone who will leave a ministry must do it decently according to the scriptures. Trim. In Ireland, we have two parishes yeah. going strong. Do you think that the reason why Trem in Ireland is going strong is because of those two parishes? Do you think that if we now have um, proliferation of those parishes, there will be crisis? Crisis. I don't think so. The, the important thing is to have quality ministers who believe in the vision. If you have strong ministers in like 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 we have in Barbary Ghana and in Galway who believe in the ministry, I mean, what what's the reason for me? What's the what reason would somebody have to break a church? For example, in Nigeria, I come, I'm not living here. I'm not going to come here to leave. Are you following? My only interest is to see the church here grow. If I go grow in leaps and bounds, that will make me relocate to Ireland for long as we follow the vision. So there is really no reason, like I told you, it's lack of understanding. A, 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 a vision is progressive. I understand that there is no way I can individually 
accomplish the, the vision that God gave to me. I need people who will enable me, who will carry the vision even further than I have done. A, a ministry is like a relay race where you run your own bit and hand over to others who will follow through. And my part is to ensure that I successfully hand over the baton to whoever is following me. Okay. All right, Bishop. Um, I know that there's tram in Ireland. Is there tram in the UK? Yes. We have tram in UK. We have uh, in uh, Upper Clapton, and that's in the east. And we have in Fulham. And then we also have in Leeds. And I think and then we have in Dagenham. And then we are opening in uh, Manchester. So we, we it just it just Can you just tell us train worldwide worldwide. What is the what strength? Is the stroke? Yes. We're talking about close to two hundred plus churches around the world. That's a big one. By the grace of God, God has been faithful to us. What is the position of train in Nigeria now? We know that uh, Bishop Okonko was once the president of uh, the Pentecostal Fellowship, Fellowship yeah. and it was you took it strong, you handed over the party. Now you are no more, but trend. What is the position of trend in Nigeria? And we are doing a bit. I would say that you cannot speak about the uh, uh, Pentecostal churches in Nigeria or even church in Nigeria without mentioning trend. Uh, that's one thing that God has enabled us to achieve. We've got a brand for ourselves. Uh, it's a ministry that it's uh, very solid in the Word of God. and. Uh, we are sticklers for the world, and people know that three strong areas of the ministry, the word of God, music, and the prayers, we are very strong in those areas. And, uh, and I would say that God has been really faithful. Just recently, we, like in Lagos, we've completed our ultra-modern cathedral in a very strategic place in Lagos, and that alone has given us an extra mileage because the, the the interesting thing about the facility is that no one ever believed that a building can come out of that very location, given the terrain and all the stuff. But here we are, God enabled us to raise up a building that is now sort of the talk of the town. Everyone around there, all you need to say is that you get into Lagos and go into Trump, they will take you there. And one of the things we we try to encourage our pastors to do is to not just go into a location, buy a property so that you can be well established. If you are still renting a place, you, will, you are at the mercy of the landlord who could throw you out at any time. So most of our churches are in their facilities. So we, we, we are grateful to God. And there are other social activities we are involved in. In, in Nigeria, for instance, every year I have a, I, I, I have lecture where we address national issues, social issues, and uh, it's been going on now close to, to to the ten years to twelve, and then every year we have football uh, matches, and uh, every and then we have schools, ongoing school for area boys and indigent people who are indigent in the society. Three schools within the city of Lagos, for instance, where we tr train people free of charge, give them uh, vocational training, and then uh, uh, empower them when they finish. And there are people we also give you scholarships to. And then, of course, uh, in my wife's ministry, the Women International Women Prayer Conference, which has gone on now for over 10 years, in different parts of the, this city. She holds these conferences in Abuja, in Port Harcourt, in Asaba, in Enugu, and of course in Lagos, every every month in Lagos. Last Thursday of every month that draws people from different churches. And uh, and that has touched a lot of people and, and with great and, uh, testimonies across the place. So that all these things help to give us mileage. And of course, he also conducts cervical, cervical cancer uh, screening for people in remote places, close to 500, 700 people, which he does free of charge to them. So we do all these things. And of course, 
it, it, it enables people to understand that we're not just preaching the gospel, but impacting people's lives socially. Yeah, that is very important when you see an institution who looks into the empowerment of the people is um, is very important because um, talking about like you talk you spoke uh, you just talked about cervical cancer okay. it's very important because cancer is killing a lot of people killing a lot of people unfortunately and, at this time yeah <laughs> and most of our people are not the worst people still believe that cancer is not for me That's it's true. for the other person mm. which is not true it's not true cancer it's is for everybody what you should do is you you make sure you go, go check up but yeah. people die for for things they could have avoided. That's what I've discovered. What they could have avoided, they died on that account because they did not check it out. So that's one of the reasons why I believe that that program is very important. It's very important. Well, um, Bishop, this brings me to the state of the nation. How would you assess the present situation in Nigeria? Well, I would say that um, since after the election. Um, not much has been done because it's just about a month or so ago that the president was able to settle in his ministers. Without ministers, there you is really anything. nothing you that could do. be done. And having said that, I'm, I must say that uh, uh, minus the prayers of the saints, the situation is very, very critical in the country because of more essential in the area of security. There is so much insecurity in the, in the country. We, we, are, we, are, we have the challenge of kidnappers. That and now is no more in Niger Delta. It has moved to any, any part of the country. They, can, they kidnap you in Lagos, which was not like, that, like it, it wasn't there before. So anywhere, anyone could be kidnapped. And this thing is going on not so much uh, results have been gotten in that area. And then added to it is the issue of terrorism, which are, is another dimension. We have bombs, I mean, they are, they are, they are bomb blasts all over the place, and people are boasting about it. And not, I don't, I don't see anyone who has truly been prosecuted and put behind bars concerning it. So it's a great challenge to us. and. Uh, but we are, we are still watching the thing closely while we are speaking up and calling on the government that they have a responsibility to provide an enabling environment for the citizens to function. Without security and the necessary infrastructure, we are going nowhere. So it's a very challenging situation, but the church has to keep praying to God so that it doesn't come to a very uh, crucial stage where we cannot move on the streets. Because it's gradually moving, tilting towards that, to the point where you can't move on the street, and uh, and that's not good for the nation. And it will also affect uh, affect our economy. No one wants to invest in an, any any economy any economy that w there is no security. Yes. And what do you think is responsible for that? Is it? Um, um... I think there is an ag there is agitation from all quarters. The government must, as of necessity, provide a platform for sovereign national conference where all the parties will sit down and discuss their issue. Because if you don't do that, and people are bottling a lot of things in their, in their heart, then they will let it out somehow. That's what's happening. People have so much in their heart with the begging for answers. And until that is done, it's going to be very difficult to 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 manage. So and, uh, I think a lot of pressure is being put on the president to allow that to happen. Let people discuss their affairs, and then we'll be able to know whether we're good. I mean, look at the bombing of the United Nations headquarters in Lagos and in in Abuja. That's not that's not funny at all. If they could penetrate. The United Nations, then who is who is free? Any person, any any institution could be penetrated, and so it, it requires. I think people are unhappy, and uh, and the political class have taken the masses for granted for too long. We read of millions and millions of 
or even to billions of naira that people are stealing. And then no one is being arrested. None of them is being indicted, put behind bars. We read the feet, you tell us of them, and then we are waiting to hear that, okay, this person, have been, you've taken this money back from them and put them in jail. We never hear that. And so people are wondering, there is so much suffering, the roads are bad. The, the fuel uh, situation is not even better. You see that electricity has gone down to the, the to, to, I mean, South Africa that is, is less than Nigeria is having close to how many, about 40, 40,000 megawatts. And Nigeria that is 150, 160, we are having less than 40 megawatts. I mean, 4 mega, 4,000 megawatts. That's not good. So, and what is happening is that there is so much unemployment. Why? Because people cannot use their initiative. Everyone is now looking, I mean, most of the, most of the companies are shut down. And, uh, and when you shut them down, that means many will be unemployed. And a man that is not unemployed, you're thinking in terms of three, five people behind him that he's taking care of. So a lot of our companies are going to Ghana. So all these people are unhappy, and so they must let it out somehow. With due respect, sir, you have mentioned um, things that are really putting, uh, putting Nigeria and Nigerians down. Um, but we still lay the blame at, at the doorsteps of big people like you, of fathers of the nation, who are where politicians who want to when they get into trouble. Father, please pray, pray for me. And you still lay hands on them and pray for them. It is as if you intercede for them not to get uh, imprisoned. But when you now come out to condemn all these things and in the in the bedroom you pray for them and uh, nothing happens to them, we, st we must lay those problems at your doorstep. No, you will not look at it that way. We have a responsibility. Do you know that if we have not been praying, it could have developed into anarchy. I mean, it would have become and it could have it is just because we are praying. That's why it has not developed, degenerated to anarchy in the country. And number two, uh, uh, we, 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 the Bible enjoys us to pray for those in authority. Number three, the fact that you cancel somebody who, who comes, I mean, as a church, we don't, have, we don't have the right to send anyone, no matter how bad he is, who comes to God away. So what do you do? You cancel him to do what is right. And the fact that you cancel someone to do what is right, and he leaves you to do what he wants, you can't put that blame on me. So what I expect is for the law to have his cause. You see what I mean? If the person is stealing, we have the, 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 the law there to arrest him. I don't care whether you are an elder in the church or not. If you steal money, you should go to jail. That's my attitude to it. Even if you are coming to my church, I, I tell them, I'm not going to, I'm not going to influence anything that has to do with you breaking the law. Because if you're a Christian, you should better do what is right. You should show the light, other than trying to find a way to to cut corners. And so, it, I expect the law to take its course. The reason this thing is continuing is because the law has not taken its course. Most of the uh, 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 institutions that are set up uh, for me are just uh, window dressing, EFCC window dressing. The day they want to, to the day they want to witch hunt somebody, they go and pick the person. People are committing atrocities every day who are in the government and no one is doing anything. And we've been telling the government take action. For me, I think one of the things that will stop this trend in Nigeria is one as soon as somebody is caught stealing money number one take the money from him and two jail him don't what just if, what if the money has been put into the church coffers how can he put there is no way somebody will steal a billion or two billion or hundred or five hundred million and bring it to church. It's Bishop, not possible. Bishop, Bishop, you, it's know, not possible. you know, you know, you know the reason why I'm asking this question. I know, ask because you see, 
we have evidence that what that people not, 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 that they will not they will not they will not, not it might not even be true uh, uh, but they would the, now let's say i've stolen them um, one billion naira yes and i want to be important i know bishop okonko can, can intercede for me to, He's no, so that you will not do that bishop just hold on that bishop okonko can intercede for me yeah then I will be the largest donor in the church. Yeah. The church wants a, wants a building foundation. I've invested in it. Yes. I've done all that. What I believe should be the responsibility of the church is to ask, what, how much is your salary? Exactly. That's what I'm but saying. But the church do, do no, not no, no, ask. No, no, they no, just collect the no, money. No, 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 no. That's, that's it. Sure. That's we it. have so many. I, I, I don't want to let, let me Let, 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 me, give you, let me give you <laughs> a let me, let me answer you. For instance, for me, if... I, I mean, the I, I, Bible tells me to know the state of your ship. Now, if somebody I know very well is a member in my church and I know what you are supposed to be earning, and then suddenly you come up with 100 million, I will ask you, <laughs> how did you get the 100 million? Where did you get it from? You must tell me. What did you do? I must check through this. How legitimate is this money? If you have stolen it, for me, I will not take it, unless I didn't know where you dumped it. But once I find it out from the coffers, I will not take, I won't touch it because it's stolen money, and you should return it. These are the, we teach these things. As far as our ministry is concerned, yeah. we teach it. Listen, uh, we in our in our church, we 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 are passionate about Nigeria. Every Sunday in the headquarters church. We sing the national anthem. What is and we, we recite? We recite the pledge. What is the reason? I want to inculcate the national orientation in the minds of our people, so that they will know that you don't have another country. We have this country to to uh, as a, a gift from God, and we have the responsibility to ensure that things are right in the nation. So, if there are churches who are doing that, is wrong. Any church that encourages stealing money from the coffers of the nation when people are suffering. I mean, in spite of the, this banding of billions all over the place, it, it, it this, what we experience in the, in the street betrays the fact that we are rich. It's, it, there is nothing that makes Nigeria rich. There is nothing that makes us uh, the giant of Africa. Look at our streets. It's children who should be in school are running in between cars selling handkerchief. Is that what to so I, I ask myself? Why can these people who claim to be politicians not see these things happening? Like I told you, that's the reason for anarchy. That's the reason people are unhappy. People know that nothing is being done. And it's unfortunate.